Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back on the path to the Edinburgh and we are in the Leander, the tier 5 British light cruiser. So let's take a look at our commander. Now obviously I must have forgotten to switch from Bruce, Way or Bruce Fraser over to Azure Lane Belfast. Uh, so in the video that you're going to be seeing uh, you'll see this build which is uh, Nikolai Kuznetsov, Norman Scott, Bruce Fraser as the commander with reach, or beyond range, uh, home run, punch through, and fixated with fully packed as our commander skills. Uh, but, like I said, I will be switching over to Belfast for pretty much the rest of the thing. Uh, so I'll have to remember to do that. Anyway, so let's take a look at our commander, or let's look at our equipment, sorry. Uh, we are running Aiming Systems Mod 1, and we are running Steering Gears Mod 2. Uh, we have the Alpha Tester flag, which we will be running. And we also have Smoke Generator, Sonar, and two heals. Uh, we didn't run any camo, I don't think, on this, so I apologize. Well, I say apologize. It's actually only making it harder for me, so it's not really anything that you guys would be upset about. Uh, survivability. Uh, we have 28,700 hit points with a 152 millimeter main battery, 50 caliber Mark 21s that you have eight of that reach out 14.9 kilometers, reload in 7.1 seconds, and have a 180 degree turn time of 25.7. AP shell maximum damage is 3255, and you have no HE once again. Secondary armament, 102 millimeter, 45 caliber QF Mark. 19s. Uh, I have to do Roman numerals in my head. Eight of those that reach out 5.2 kilometers and reload in three seconds. They have a maximum HE shell damage of 1500 and a 6% chance of setting fires. Torpedoes. You have 533 millimeter QR Mark IV torpedoes. You have eight of those. One, uh, one quad launcher on either side of the ship. Uh, they reload in just 96 seconds and they reach out to eight kilometers, which is nice, considering uh, the f or the six kilometers that we had in the uh, Emerald. Torpedo speed, though, 61 knots, so not particularly quick. Um, and their maximum damage, I think I forgot to say that, is 15,433 with a torpedo detectability of 1.3 kilometers. A defense is starting to step up, which is always a good thing. 20 millimeter Orlikin Mark IVs. You have five of those doing 18 damage per second and reaching out to two kilometers. Then you have the 20 millimeter uh, Orlikin Mark Vs that you have eight of that reach out to uh, two kilometers and do 24 damage per second. Then you have the 40 millimeter Bofors Mark II that you have eight of that do 32 damage per second, reach out to three and a half kilometers. And then you have the 102 millimeter 45 caliber QF Mark 19 secondaries that you have eight of that do 38 damage per second and reach out to five kilometers. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 34.1 knots with this build. Turning circle radius is 640 meters. Rudder shift time is 5.5 seconds with this current build. Concealment. Detectability by sea is 10.9 kilometers. Detectability by air is 6.5 kilometers. Guaranteed is always two and a 4.2 kilometer smoke firing penalty. Armor. Uh, this is actually somewhat of a step back from the uh, Emerald in terms of armor. So let's take a look at it. Uh, it's got 13 millimeters everywhere. And then from there it has, uh, let's see, see if we can find it. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Is this the plating I'm thinking of? Whoops. I think it is. God bless it. Alright, so it's 100 millimeters right at the center of the ship. But, again, you don't want to, to count on it doing any anything to help you out. Um, but, as you can see, the Citadel is significantly smaller. Uh, most of it's underwater. There's a little bit of it sticking above water at center ship uh, from just the smokestack back to the rear uh, mast. So it's really, really not too bad in this ship. However, you still have to be extremely careful due to your very thin armor. Uh, it is not uncalled or it's not impossible for shells to go through your bow and, and hit that super or hit that citadel. So 
keep that in mind. It's not as likely, because there's, I mean, there's a lot of room between the bow and the citadel, but it is possible, so keep it in mind. Overview. Sequential torpedoes. Torpedoes can be launched one by one. Flare for piercing means that they can only fire armor piercing. And greater heal. Um, and this is where you start to see one of the perks of these British light cruisers. Their heals that they get for the entire line, which is nice, they also have a pretty nice heal. Like, it, it gets more damage repaired than any of the other cruisers' heals. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and that also translates to the battleship's ability to heal also for the British. Uh, Leander, a new generation light cruiser designed to serve as a scout both within a squadron and independently. In contrast to her predecessors, the ship's main advantage was that her main guns were placed in gun turrets. The ship also had stronger AA defenses and better armor protection. The better armor is, I, I would argue, not so much. But uh, anyway, the Citadel location is definitely better. She entered service in 1933. There were five of them in the series. So let's take a look at it. Now, obviously, the first thing you're going to notice, instead of having single gun turrets, we have dual gun turrets. Uh, that's both a blessing and a curse. Uh, it's nice to have more guns available uh, with mm, less angles. So you can angle a little bit and get the rear turret involved. And uh, you have to go pretty much broadside to get the third turret involved. Uh, but you can get six guns on target that relatively have a pretty decent fire rate. I mean, it's a good looking ship overall. I don't hate it. The smokestack's a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little combined smokestack. Uh, you've got, I'm assuming, two, two different stacks there that they've kind of squeezed up into one. Um, so, that's a little weird. But other than that, it's not a bad looking ship. It looks kind of modern with the boxy uh, superstructure and all that. And with that, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on fault line in the Leander. Uh, you've already seen my build. Like I said, I did change my build, but uh, apparently I forgot to for this match. Uh, which is fine. It just goes to show you that you can use more than just one build to play a ship. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to like ex tell you guys that I am some great... I, I do not like this particular line of cruisers. I've said this, I think, in every video so far. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea. I do like the fact that they have really good AP. I just don't like their one-dimensionalness. Like, it's like if you go up against a decent player, you're screwed because they'll stay bow into you. You can only farm their superstructure for so long. I mean, American and German BBs, you can get away with it a little bit because they have so much hit points to their superstructure. Um, but you really, really have to have really good positioning and be able to ambush people in these ships to really have great games. Uh, now, is that saying that these aren't, aren't good ships? No, these are good ships, like I said. It's just that they excel at very specific niche area, or niche. Is it niche or niche? Either way, there's a very narrow area that these ships excel in. Um, and they, they really do lack the versatility of an HE show. And so that, that comes into a, a problem quite often. Uh, for these ships and until you get the bolt or not the bolty the Edinburgh you don't have the armor to take the hits like the Edinburgh is literally the only one in the entire line that has the ability to tank from the front so you can sit there and tank those shots now once you get the Edinburgh that becomes a, a whole different ball game you can take the hits you can shoot further you can do all the things that you you need to make these ships really 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 come into their own but until then, you've got the struggle bus that is the flimsiest, uh, less fierce ships that you could possibly run into in a battleship. Like, very few ships that you look at and you're like, alright, it's not that big a deal. Uh, these are one of them. And I, I said this on stream the other day with the Hipper and the fact that like the other German cruisers, with the exception of Weimar, I don't really fear the Hipper, I don't really fear the, the Prinz Eugen until I get into a situation where they have the ability to come out from behind a rock and dump six torpedoes into the side of my ship. Uh, or eight or whatever it is. I think it's six, but I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the one situation where those ships are extremely good. Because unlike a lot of cruisers, that come around the corner at close range on a battleship, you're not likely to obliterate them and, and send them back to port in a single shot at close range. 
because they have that turtle back armor, they are exceptional at getting around the corner, taking the initial 20 to 30,000 damage hit that you're going to give them, and then living long enough to drop those torpedoes into you and send you back to Davy Jones. Um, so, those in, in the Edinburgh and all of these, these British light cruisers are very similar in that aspect. Like, at a distance, these aren't the scariest things in the world. Uh, your, your armor on a battleship will protect you from these AP shells for the most part. Now, I know a lot of people was actually bringing up uh, using Von Essen as an uh, inspiration for extra penetration angles, and that's actually a pretty solid idea that I didn't think of when I had made the original builds for these. Uh, so I might actually go, up, go back and test that out going forward. But you can see, against lightly armored targets sailing around broadside, these things are nasty. They're not citadeling, uh, which is unfortunate. We're aiming a little high, so... But we're still, when we get a good shot in, like, the health disappears on the enemy. And we are able to sit in this smoke screen and just have a good time. Our teammate moved past the smoke, he kept everything spotted, which is beautiful. This is exactly what you're looking for in these sorts of ships. And now that that's gone, we're going to move forward, we're going to capture this base, and we're going to wrap around. We have an October Revolutia over here, so we've got we've to keep that in mind. We don't want to get into a 1v1 versus him uh, unless we absolutely have to. So we're going to come into the base, we're going to capture the base, get an assist cap for this, get a little bit of extra bonus X XP, and then we're going to wrap around the corner and we are going to absolutely start to, to dump on this guy. But not when we are the main target. Like These ships, you do not want to be the center of attention. You want the, the target that you're up against to be looking at somebody else, to be thinking about somebody else, and not thinking about you. You don't want to be the scary thing for them, because if you're the scary thing, guess who's getting shot? It's gonna be you. Now, unfortunately, we launch our torpedoes at this guy, and he eats a couple torpedoes from our destroyer, and that's gonna force him to turn out, uh, which is real unfortunate. I was wholeheartedly expo uh, expecting to smack this guy. But you can see, aiming high up into that side armor, trying to avoid the belt, we're able to get a lot of penetrations on that thing. Sure, it's a Russian battleship, and if we were a little closer, there's a chance we could actually citadel that man. But, we don't chase kites, right guys? That is one of the things that I've always tried to tell people. Like, when somebody makes that turn to go out into the corner, obviously our team finishes them off relatively quickly. When you've got a destroyer there, help them with torpedoes and stuff, that always helps. But, but, we don't chase people to the borders. Because that takes you away from objectives, like this Aoba who's trying to take the center cap for his team. Trying to keep or to take the center cap is extremely difficult late in the game, as all of our shells fall short. And I'm not gonna lie, kind of caught me off guard there. Uh, sometimes it happens, though. But uh, we're gonna take and try try to hit this guy. He's he's actually turning away from us now. He's gonna try to like get away from us, but angle to us at the same time. He's he's in a pickle. This man is in trouble. Uh, he's all over the place. Doesn't know what he's won. He's caught between a rock and a hard place. He's got torpedoes looking at him at both sides of the ship. He's got armor piercing coming in from one side he's trying to angle against. He's got high explosive coming in from the other that he's taking a beating from. This man is in trouble. Uh, there's no way he actually survives this and, and captures the base. No way. And this is why taking that center cap on any map, but especially this map, is so important. When you have a domination, you have those center caps, you can play so much easier. Now that being said, I'm also going to give a perfect lesson in how to win harder and lose the match. Uh, now, here's the deal. I have always tried to be an entertainer, alright? I am not the teacher. I am not the best at the game. I've never claimed to be the best at the game. I do, I do know, I do realize that I am better than a lot of people at the game. But I've never claimed to be better than everybody. I've never claimed to be, you know, more than I am. I am above average at best. You guys get to see the best of the best that I get to, to do, right? And so, when, when I'm trying to explain things, just keep that in mind. Like, I am not the best in this game. I still make all of the mistakes that everybody else... I make all of the mistakes that I call out regularly. Um, but that's the beauty of being able to go back and watch my own gameplay, is I get to see myself make those mistakes and try to learn from them so that I don't do them in the future. Now, being part of my entertainer nature, right, 
part of what is uh, what I like to put on YouTube is getting a lot of damage, getting good games, real high damage games that a lot of people enjoy. And uh, those are the kinds of games that I like to showcase. And so I tend to be a little more reckless than you should be. Uh, and I'm going to showcase that going on here in the near future. Now, obviously, we got the uh, the Moncuchli over here, or Moncuchli, that's pushing up. We've got a Dallas over here. We've got a broadside Dallas who's kind of turning into angle. We're going to go ahead, drop our smoke, start getting uh, to disappear. The, Mon uh, the Monty over here got us spotted, so we're going to go ahead and try to shoot him. Um, our teammate has rushed in and is now in a crossfire between the Monty and the Dallas. So we're going to try to put some pressure on the Dallas. Uh, while we can't really do much to the Monty because he's bow tanking, we can do some stuff to the Dallas. We get five full penetrations, getting a solid hit out of that. And uh, Monty comes up. He's giving us the angle, so now we switch back to shooting at him. We're trying to save our teammate, but this Genova is in a world of hurt. Two Italian cruisers going toe-to-toe -to -toe at close range is never going to end well for anybody. And uh, sure enough, Genova goes down, but Monty follows quick behind thanks to the uh, Konigsberg that's next to us. Now, our team has a significant advantage that you cannot overstate. We have all of the things right now. There is no need for me to do what I'm about to do, which is push and engage two battleships and an American light cruiser in a very squishy ship that we've already established is very quickly sent back to port. Uh, so keep that in mind. When I make this push, it is not the right play. And that's one of the things I want to talk out. Uh, like, this is not the right play. 100% none of the times that you're in a game should you ever make this push if you are winning the game. If you're losing the game, there's not enough time to get the cap switched over to get the points in your favor, then you have to push, right? You don't have a choice. You have to push. I didn't have to push here. And unfortunately for me, this Fuso is going to get back to back to back of the greatest salvos I've ever seen out of a Fuso. Watch this guy's next shot as it comes out. Completely catches me off guard. I think I'm safe from the Fuso. I go to finish off the Dallas. I'm feeling pretty good. The island's between me and the Fuso. I was extremely wrong. This Fuso puts about eight rounds right through my ship. There you go. Boom. All my health gone. Any aspirations of me deciding to push forward and uh, YOLO torp this Bayern just went out the window. I have no chance. So here, I just got smacked. I need to stop. But in my head, I'm like... I gotta get out here, I gotta drop some torpedoes and try to hit this guy. We just hit him with torpedoes! He's got a flood! He just DC'd. We've got fire starters on my team. If I can just turn around and get away from these guys, there's a chance that I could survive this. Unfortunately, he hits me and knocks out my steering as we turn around. Showing your backside to the enemy is a good way to end up getting your steering knocked out. And unfortunately, there is nothing I can do except keep shooting at him as he uh, inevitably finishes us off getting a fire with his high explosive. So, just like that, we were full health and then we weren't. And that is the, the theme of these, these uh, at least the low tier British cruisers and even even the Edinburgh for that matter. It's, it's one of those games where you could easily, easily have avoided a loss if all you did was one smart play. But you didn't. You just had to win harder. You would think, with as many times as I've seen teammates do this, when, as many times as I've done this, as many times as we've seen videos from Jingles doing this, we just had to win harder. And unfortunately for us, that is not going to win us this match. However, one of the things that is going to win us the match, I know, turn of events, crazy. You may have noticed that there is a lowly tier 4 American destroyer, the Farragut, on the friendly team, who has not tried to win harder, who has done everything correctly in this situation. Not only did he not go after the two battleships with his short range torpedoes and his gunboat with no camo, he decided, okay, my teammates very, very easily could throw this match. I'm going to go over, I'm going to capture another base, and guarantee the win. Now, I'm not going to lie. 
As this man came out from behind the island, I've already made huge mistakes, right? Like, I've already completely threw this team. The Fuso got god-tier dispersion at the end of the game to absolutely win this game for his team, and if I was him, I would be frustrated as crap knowing that the last person alive on the enemy team that is the sole thing keeping the team from losing the match is a destroyer that you will never spot unless he does something incredibly stupid. And this guy, to his credit, is not going to do anything incredibly stupid. He's already captured the third base, he's going to leave the base, he's going to go in, and he is going to not engage the Fuso. Now, right now, he's at 13.2. He couldn't engage the Fuso if he wanted. He does start turning towards the Fuso, and I'm not going to lie. Again, I started getting that tingling feeling like, oh god, please don't. Just don't throw the game, man. At this point, I am like begging him. And of course, I'm not in chat. I, I've got chat turned off in game now because, again, of all the things that I've talked about. Like, I don't talk in game chat anymore. Uh, but, I am like begging my screen. I'm like, God, please don't let this guy start firing his guns. Because I can see it happening. I've seen it happen so many times. Like, we have the game one. This guy doesn't have to do anything. But at the same time, who am I to sit there and say anything? I literally just did everything wrong three minutes ago. This guy has done everything right. So I can't sit there and say, oh, man, if this guy opens his guns, what a doofus. No, I should never have opened up my guns. I should have never engaged the two battleships. I'm in a squishy freaking, uh, squishy freaking cruiser. Why would I ever decide to go, hmm, yes, two battleships, both very healthy, and I'm in a squishy light cruiser that I know can be sent back to port. Why would I take that fight? It doesn't make any sense. It was the dumbest play I could have made, and I and I made the play, and I should have lost that match. L fortunately for us, we had that Farragut that actually did the right thing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this nice little teaching moment, and if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.